the second season of Travel People. Today, I'm very excited about this first guest. Uh, her name is Miss Amy Fairfield, and we met in Morocco at the American School of Marrakesh, where we both taught, and she still has a notebook and is taking notes there. But let me tell you, this girl has come, she has gone to a lot of other places. Amy, tell them what is in the background. Okay, so I am in Dubai right now, right in the heart of the Dubai Marina. Yeah. So um, her apartment is amazing, and she's she's right there. Any iconic buildings you've ever seen? The Dubai, the Ain Dubai, mm -hmm. is right outside, and so is what we call the Persian Gulf. If you're thinking about, if you're watching this, thinking about what kind of things can I do in Dubai, I mean, there's obvious, like Dubai, it's pretty easy. Um, since it's such a tourist destination, it's really easy to quickly figure out what to do here, like your must-dos. You have to go up the Burj Khalifa, of course, um, Burj Al Arab. Um, then there is, there's the Souk, which is the marketplace. Like there's the Souk Madinat, which is kind of, which is by the Burj Al Arab. I had lunch there with a friend earlier today. Um, there's another Souk Al Bahar that's next to the Burj Khalifa. And then there's like the more um, like traditional, like the old Dubai, but I'll give you a little hint, nothing in Dubai is old. That's what I was it's only 50 say. years old and I don't, this souk is not even that old, but it's called Al Steep. And it is nice to go and look around and like there's little boats and there's like a marketplace, but I was sort of <laughs> probably unnecessarily snotty about that because in Morocco, I'm like, well, we have the real marketplaces there, but it is still like really, really nice to go and look around and especially if you haven't traveled to this part of the world um it's definitely a must see but yeah and like so cindy said that's another thing like if you live here or if you're traveling here like a must day a must do is a pool day um and there's all kinds of, like at your doorstep there'll be all kinds of options for about between 30 and 50 dollars probably all inclusive it'll be a really nice pool you can get food and drink and it's just a nice way to spend an afternoon like with your partner, with your girlfriends, or even by yourself if you just want to go and relax. So that's a really popular thing to do here. Um, I know this sounds ridiculous, but must-dos in Dubai. There's a couple of really nice malls. And before I moved here, I was always like, I'm not moving there. I don't want to go to the mall. <laughs> um, but they are really nice. And you do end up caving and going to the mall because <laughs> They have like, there's things to do in them. There's like movies and skiing. Like there's a ski slope yeah. in the Mall of Emirates and um, there's an aquarium in the Dubai Mall. So you do end up going to the mall. It's so hot outside. It is, it would be like 125, 126. Oh like it, it gets really, really oh hot here. But it's gorgeous. Like during the winter months, end of October, to March and then even into April. It's just beautiful and just crystal clear weather. And I would highly recommend doing a drive to Oman. Um, the Omani border is just about two hours away, just outside of Dubai, not even 10 or 15 minutes. Like you're in the desert camels in their natural habitat on the side of the road. Um, for spring break, I have pictures of this too. I went about an hour away to a resort, gorgeous clear water in the Gulf of Oman there. And you go out and you can go snorkeling and kayaking and swimming and we saw dolphins and a whale shark. And it's just a fun, I've done it twice now. You stay overnight on the boat and they cook for you. And it's like, you don't have self service and it's just completely peaceful. And Alice, and this is it. This is the grand tasting for Bonham Vegas and Pork. And we are having a fabulous time. We serve rails with some of the best chefs in the industry. And as you can see, there is food, there is wine, there is Vegas baby vodka. Right behind me is Piatas or Pronto. And also, I, I you just, this is it. Like, if you're going to do one food venue, 
one food and booze event in your repertoire over the year, this is it because they are here and the food is spectacular. The Bois has a fabulous truffle soup with brioche. Oh my god. Of course, as we continue on, we have pork rams and steak and burger. And we just had the tartare from Gordon and Ramsay. So what do we have here? Sticky Sassy Pudding. Oh, there's one of the famous burgers, right? There we go. The famous Al's Kitchen here. Uh, but we do everything from the smallest half ton ferment right. to the very large right. ferment. And, and as a winemaker, it's fun because we get to play with almost every different variety that's grown in Washington. Oh, cool! This is really cool. This is how you get it to a hotel. Right here. This is awesome. I like it. Pleasure to have you join us tonight. Okay. This is fun. You know? Here we go. We're going down the hallway. Jazz festival is every year. We're staying at a luxurious, lovely property. Hello. Hello. This is Elaine and Scott Harris. And please tell them where you are in the name of your website. And we're here in hot Vegas. That's very <laughs> hot Vegas right now. Yes, and our uh, website is cuisinas.com. You can also find us. You can hashtag us at cuisinas confidential as well. I have done so much it's phenomenal you're all going to want their life by the time this is over <laughs> and you know usually i don't have to read but i have to read with these guys because they've done so much <laughs> so they they have published their published work has been in things you know publications such as the la times the boston globe chicago tribune travel and leisure google travel modern luxury the french quarter magazine in france the monica uh, and monaco and the los an tourism city guide just to name a few things. Um, they have done journeys across the U.S., Europe, Mexico, and the Caribbean. And I love the way that you are in the moment, wherever you are. You know, it's not like rehearsed. It's not. It's just you take us there in that moment. Right. That's it. I think that's one thing that people like about us is go whatever's happening around us, like you said in the moment. That's just how we, that's just how we work well. That way, unscripted. Yes, but also not to like not to bring this aspect in is that of course we do the research. Of course, yeah. You know, we always do the background. We always know, you know, our audience. Who you know, who are we representing? What are what's going on? Who am I getting in front of? And uh, but we always take the challenge. It's like I I would say I say yes. Because, but I also prepare to say that, yes. Right. And I think I was especially drawn to Elaine's story because she was a teacher and uh, yes. as am I. And please just tell them because I think there's a lot of us out there that have, you know, we've done education maybe our whole careers and we're ready. We're always going to be teachers. We're always going to be curious. We want to help people, but you're doing it in a whole new way. So, kind of tell your backstory on that. So, in total, I was with our school district here for 10, 15 years, and um, the thing is, just it, it's just a really difficult career. <laughs> it really is. People don't understand. It's not you know an eight to five job. It is all consuming. And um, you're dealing, especially at the elementary, you're dealing with all kinds of behavioral issues. You have to be the psychologist, nurse, teacher, mother, you know, um, arbitrator, whatever, <laughs> all thrown into one. And um, it, it's 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 not for the faint of heart. Well, I'm sure I experienced what many people experience in that in the field is that. There's, there were so many different budget cuts constantly to the point where I had huge class sizes, which were really not manageable. And I saw that and decided I wanted to try something different. And at that time, I guess wine looked pretty appealing to me <laughs> because I started drinking wine. I'm like, he's a good teacher that I am, right? I'm like, I think I should learn 
about it since I'm in education, and that's what I started doing. I started learning, uh, taking classes, and being involved with different groups and blind wine tasting. And then blogging started, and that's how we got started. It was uh, a friend mentioned, why don't you start this thing called blogging? They have the first ever blogging convention in Las Vegas. So when my friend's husband's worked for the convention center, we got tickets, we went, and that's all we heard was like, do video, do video. Okay, I'm like, okay, so we get our little flip camera. I'm like, let's go to wine country, because Scott had never been to the Monterey area, which where I was, right. had come from. And uh, we brought the little camera just to interview everybody I could that was willing to get in front of my camera. And not only that, but because of that, I opened doors where we were able to get into different wineries. It's been, like I say, I, I feel like I landed in the lottery, you know, a million dollar lifestyle. Because we get to do things, not just that they're wonderful things, but we get to meet the people behind it that creates so many wonderful stories that people don't often get to hear that we get to tell. So I feel like it's a big privilege. So I was glad I made the career decision. In fact, I, I went in, handed in my resignation, and like a week later, my first uh, international trip presented itself, and I got to fly to Playa de Carmen to Rosewood, Mayakoba, to write about their exquisite property there. So I was like, I made the best career decision ever. Absolutely. <laughs> so that, that's how we got, I got started with the travel writing. We had been writing about wine and food events in Vegas right. for a while prior to that. But that was, it was a couple of years in before we got into the actual travel piece of it, which I'm glad we did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so tell, so the gosh, there's so many places you've been. So let's just start, let's start with Vegas and what where would be as people are planning their summer travel fall travel uh, what what are some highlights that you feel like people really should see should do should eat well, we like what we like to tell people is that Vegas is much more than the neon lights on the Las Vegas Strip yeah they're beautiful the hotel they just reopened one is four billion dollars resorts will just open a week two weeks three, three weeks ago something like that yeah but it's beautiful outside, an hour outside of Las Vegas, the Valley of Fire State Park. They have petroglyphs everywhere. You can camp there. There are lots of uh, um, uh, mountain mountain sheep, um, big horned sheep out there, and also Mount but Charleston. You have the spring, you're not yeah, spring, the spring. Too, too hot right now. Too hot. Yeah. But Mount Charleston, it has a dual life because right now it's 109, whatever. It's probably like 75 up there, probably. And in the winter, we even have a ski and snow resort. And that's literally 45 minutes from my house. From the strip. And you could be walking, you think like you're in Colorado, or even the Swiss Alps almost. It's forested, you don't see any, you can't see a casino anywhere, um, can't see a strip at all. And it's a total life change down there. Yeah, and most people don't even know <clears throat> that we have this mountain, which is just, it really is, it's such a nice uh, getaway. In fact, sometimes I don't know if I could live in Vegas without the mountain right. because. We at least have that reprieve, especially from the oppressive heat of the summer. But it's also a wonderful place if you're bringing your family to go and do some hiking or just get out of the crazy of, of, the, of the strip. 